All right, so the question is, why do we love and use pocket hole joinery in all our chicken coops? In a nutshell, the easiest way for me to explain that is, in the world of woodworking, the art, the skill, the trade is all about wood joinery. And one of the oldest forms of wood joinery is mortise and tenon. And we actually have done a lot of chicken coops using mortise and tenon joinery. The problem with it, it's very time consuming. And anything that's time consuming is gonna be very expensive. Fast forward to today's day, pocket hole joinery is a way to join two pieces of wood. If everything's set up correctly, if you're using the right screws, it is very quick, very strong. And one of the things I cannot emphasize enough is with our pocket hole joinery, we have machines that we know are set up perfectly. Maybe we'll go inside and I'll show you what to look for to make sure you have it set up perfectly. But it really starts for me is the selection of lumber. And when it comes to the species of lumber, it's absolutely critical. We love Douglas for lumber and it's because for the price, it is extremely affordable, but it's also a very stable, straight, and hard softwood. And the reason why that's important is when you're using pocket screw joinery, these screws are going into the joining piece across grain. And because the screw's going across grain, it bites into the grain and makes it very hard for that screw to ever strip out. If you take a screw and you're gonna screw it down into the end grain like that, it's easy to strip it out. The other thing again about pocket hole joinery is we can make a pocket hole within maybe one second, if that, and it's really quick and easy. Anyone can just take a face clamp, use a screw gun, have the right size number two square head bit, and drive those screws into the wood. The other reason why I love pocket screw joinery, it kind of goes along with what I just said, is 90% of our coops we ship out. And I wanna make sure our customers can assemble their coop as easy as possible, and it doesn't get any easier than using pocket hole joinery. All right, so we're inside the shop, and here's a great opportunity to kind of really start to dissect why pocket hole joinery. So right here, we got some walls up, and you know, it's interesting, this is actually a brand new coupe that's gonna be coming out soon that I can tell right away is gonna be a Carolina style construction because a lot of these pocket holes are on the outside, which means they're gonna get covered with the siding, and that's just so when you look inside, it looks even better, but when we come inside here, we have what we call our lateral pocket holes where the customer, when they get this coop, they're gonna use these holes to quickly just screw their walls together. I mean, again, I can't emphasize that enough. Oh, I also love this. We got all our vertical pocket holes. So that means the walls are gonna get screwed right down into the base. For as quick as the joint is, it is extremely strong. All right, so we're gonna start off with making a pocket hole. And I said outside, I think it takes a second. Again, this is dug fur, so important. Um, if you're doing pocket hole joinery and hem fur, white wood, spruce, it's just not gonna be as strong. The screw is gonna strip out. All right, we ready? We start the timer. We're gonna turn it on. I got pressure. Here's how long it takes to do a pocket hole. I don't think that was even a second. Oh, and that was a double pocket hole. Nice, yeah, you can set up your machines to have a single or a double. All right, so that's your pocket hole. What we do, this is also very important. I was telling the team this yesterday. We do glue all of the end grain, all of the pocket hole joints, and we don't glue it primarily for the strength of the glue to help make sure this joint's nice and strong. Actually, this is a glue that is waterproof, and that glue, when it goes onto the end grain, will seal the end grain, preventing wicking and wicking is when you got a piece of wood that's getting wet and that wood just or that water just gets soaked up into the wood and it can definitely become a common spot of wood rotting way before it should so when we do our pocket hole joineries we do glue it all and it does help with the bonds but more importantly that's to prevent the wood from rotting seals the end grain so i'm going to take the face clamp i'm going to do what we call cover the hole which means i'm going to do two holes but I have the pocket hole covered by my face clamp. And the reason for that is the face clamp is to make sure these two faces are perfectly flush. Then I can come over here, clamp that, and drive my screws. And just like that, I have an incredibly strong joint. We've proven how strong these joints are on a lot of our truss breaking videos.
actually what we've discovered is the wood will fail before the joint fails. So that's how quick and easy pocket hole joinery is. So let's take this apart. And I wanna talk about something else that it's a mistake I see all the time with DIYers. They do a pocket hole joint, but they don't buy the right screws. Why? Probably because they're more expensive, but there's, it's pointless to do pocket hole joinery if you're not using the right screws. So look at these screws. The head is a pan head, okay? And you have to understand the reason for the pan head is to make sure a screw does what its job is to do, and that is to act as a miniature clamp. Now, we have, the beauty with the Craig system is with their pocket hole, with their drill bits, Let's see if I can find one. Well, oh, here's one. This is what we use to countersink, but you'll get the idea. Same, well, almost the same bit that we have in the machines, just a little bit different, but the tip is the same. We have a pilot bit that's about a half inch long, but more importantly, look at the shoulder of this drill bit. And what that does is that's the profile it's gonna make inside the pocket hole. And the reason why that's important is when you use the right pocket hole screw, it allows that shoulder for the pan head of the screw to clamp that wood without splitting it. What I see a lot of DIYers do that is wrong is they use a regular wood screw with what I call a bugle head. And when that bugle head goes in there, it's gonna split your pocket hole. In this case, because inside that pocket hole, it's gonna become dead flat for that pan head to sit against. So let's rip this open and maybe it'll make more sense for you guys to see that. So now we just cut away what that pocket hole looks like, and this is what I'm talking about. By using a pan head screw, it sandwiches right there, bottoms out without splitting open that joint. Versus if you use a bugle head, let me see, I bet you we got some bugle heads around here. All right, so I have a bugle head screw, and this is what I mean. It looks like the end of a bugle, okay? It's tapered. And if you use this screw with a pocket hole joint, especially with the Craig system, when it goes in there, it's in, in the screw is driving into the joining piece, that bugle head is gonna split this wood open, just like a splitting maul if you're splitting firewood, versus using the proper screw that it bottoms out and all that weight is evenly displaced and it won't split it. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Don't cheat yourself if you're using pocket hole joinery, use the right screws, it's really just that simple. If you're not gonna buy one of my coops, and I cannot say this enough as clearly as I'm gonna say it, get out there and build your own coop. But take the basic things I'm trying to teach you like using pocket hole joinery. And a lot of people have never done construction before, and what I wanna do is make it so that you guys can understand what you need to understand so you can be successful. If you are using pressure treated lumber or you're going into pressure treated lumber, you got to make sure you're not cheating yourself and using the cheap stuff. You got to make sure you're using a type of hardware that is meant to go into pressure treated lumber. And the reason for that is a lot of just regular zinc, electro zinc galvanized hardware is not protected enough to withstand what the corrosion that's going to take place reacting with the metals, in this case copper, that's inside the pressure treated lumber. And that is why, you know, take for example all of our pocket screws that we use are blue coated. They are meant for exterior. They're meant to go in pressure treated lumber. And of course, you can spend a little bit more money and use stainless steel. And then the other thing that I want to mention is, if you're going to drive these screws, use a drill or a screw gun, whichever you want to call it, that has a clutch, okay? If you've never used a screw gun before and you're going to put together one of our coops or use pocket hole joinery, get a drill that has a clutch. The reason for the drill to have a clutch is, actually, I'll just do it again. I'm going to put... Actually, I'm gonna slide, here, I'm gonna go. I'll go that way right into a knot. Let's see what happens. <laughs> um, I didn't wanna use the same hole because I wanna prove a point. Now, if I put the clutch, let's say, down to right now eight, which I already know is gonna be way too light. But the reason for the clutch is so you don't overdrive the screws. And then the other thing too, actually I should mention with a screw gun, you can't really see it on this one, there's a one and there's a two. You can be on a clutch setting of eight with a one speed, that's gonna have some more torque than it will on a two speed. Now, just because, well, if you're starting out, I highly recommend using the one speed until you get really good without rounding out the heads of the screws with the square head bit. But either way, get your face clamp on, and I can't, 
Oh, it drives me nuts. And I also do like to bump the trigger. I guess it's a little pro tip. If you bump the trigger, it kind of gives it that split second for that bit to reset into the head of the screw so you don't round it out. Okay, right there. Now, when I'm walking through the shop and I see people screwing a piece of wood together, I can tell if their clutch is set right or not by the sound. Now, that did bring these two boards together, but I know we can make it tighter, but I don't want to strip it out. Um, and what I mean by stripping it out is the, you don't want the threads to completely strip out the wood or actually act as like an auger bit and, and pull that wood fiber out. Because if you lose that, then you lost the strength of your joint. We kick it up, usually about 12, I think. And then you can hear the difference. Oh yeah, now that's a nice tight joint right there. That's how it should be. So if you're using pocket hole joinery, make sure you're using a drill that has a clutch. If you're using, and here's the mistake people make, they use those damn impacts. Impacts are great for driving things where you can get away with using an impact. You most likely, if you're not familiar with using an impact and you're doing uh, pocket hole joinery, you're gonna overdrive those screws and strip them and or could, even though again, we talked about earlier that you know the screw should not split that wood and that's why it's designed for a pan head. I have seen it, especially with Doug Fur, because it is hard to strip out this wood when it's going cross grain. You'll keep driving the screws and I have had some customers call up and go, Matt, your screws are too long, they're poking out. No, they're not poking out. You're using an impact and you're driving them too deep, therefore causing it to pull out. Don't use an impact. Use a screw gun with a clutch. So guys, I hope you liked that video. I hope it answered any questions you have about why I use pocket hole joinery. If you still have questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. As always, we'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't already su subscribed, please subscribe. Later.